I want to show you a few different tips about documenting holes in model-based definition. I've got a part open in Creole Parametric. I'm going to turn on my annotation display and you can see that we have a pattern of standard holes and a pattern of regular holes. The regular holes don't have any notes associated with them. And let's go to this note over here. I'm going to cheat and use my selection filter to grab the annotation, then move it a little bit off of the part so that you can see it. And right now, this is the note that is generated by Creo Parametric when you create a standard hole. You'll notice as I move the model, the note changes orientation, but essentially it always stays flat to the screen. It's not like a standard 3D annotation. If you want to make it into a standard 3D annotation, you can do that. Let's go to the Annotate tab, and I'm going to create a new combination state. I'm going to rename this, and let's call it 7A for my different part dimensions. And now I can click on this 3D note, and in the mini toolbar, there is this icon which is assigned to state. So it will take this whole note and turn it into an annotation. Now you can see that it is lying in the plane of the hole. I can reposition it and you'll notice that it keeps the orientation. It's not staying flat to the screen. It's staying flat to its reference. Let's click on the note again and inside of here you can go to the text editor if you don't like the information that's being displayed. For example, here we have the dash and then in parentheses the number of instances in the pattern. Let's say I want that to appear at the beginning of the notes. I'm going to type in ampersand and then pattern. Oops, I'd like to do all caps. Pattern underscore and O and then I'm going to put in a space and then an X and then another space so that will give me the pattern number and that way I can get rid of this text over on the end. And in a moment, I'll show you how you can get the pattern number and then the letter X without a space. Uh, if I click OK, you can see how it looks in here. And so that way I've got my number of instances at the beginning. I'm going to select it again and go to the text editor and show you. If you use the text editor and got rid of the space in here and then click the OK button, it does know what this parameter pattern NOX is, and so that's why it ends up looking incorrect. But let's click on it again and go to the text editor, and I'm going to put a space inside of here, and then click the OK button. And if you want to get rid of the space, well, you're just going to edit it directly in here. You can go and position your mouse, and then hit the delete key, and then click again, and that way we have the number of instances followed by the letter X. Next tip to show you, let's say that we want to use the same thing for the pattern of holes up top here. And I'm going to make sure that I have my correct orientation. Yep, let's use the annotation plane called top for creating this. And I can go to the pattern of holes up top here. If I go to the hole feature, we can show annotations. And there are a few different dimensions in here. And I decide that, hey, you know what, I want the one for the diameter of the hole, which is this one right here. And then I can click the OK button. And in this way, I am showing the model dimension. This is not actually a note. If I wanted the number of instances in the pattern, first let me figure out what that dimension is. I'm going to go to the pattern and then click on the Edit command. And that way I can see the other different dimensions associated with this pattern. Let's go to the Tools tab and click Switch Dimensions. And I can see that this is actually the P36 dimension and the diameter of the hole is the D33 dimension. Now I can go back to the Annotate tab and create a note. And I'm going to the drop down to ensure that I'm using notes with a leader. And then I can pick the reference. I can pick this edge over here and then position my mouse where I want it to be. And let's type in the ampersand. And that was P36. And again, I'm going to put a space in here so that I don't confuse Creo Parametric, and I'll get rid of it in a moment. And then ampersand D33, and then click 
out here. And let's go back to the Tools tab and then switch dimensions. No longer need this particular dimension in here, so I can click on it and then use the Delete to get rid of that annotation. And like before, I can click on the note and then position my mouse right before the X, hit the Delete key, and then click again. And that way I have my note created without the space between the number of instances in the pattern and the letter X. So in this way, two different ways of generating a note for the different holes and I can reposition it. Also, I'm gonna go back to the references over here. Right now the reference is the edge. I'm gonna hold down the control key and then select the surface of the hole as well because that's what I really want if I was going to use these as semantic annotations and send this over to some kind of system for manufacturing or inspection. I really should have those references and that way I have the notes created. One last thing to mention, a lot of people want to change the default formatting of the note. I'm going to show to how to, you how to do that in another video. Be aware that in your Creo Parametric load point, in this case here, I have Creo Parametric 6 installed in Program Files, PTC, Creo 6. There is a Common Files, Text, and then Whole folder. And these are different text files. Don't just double click on them because Windows 10 will think that they are Outlook Holidays files and will try to open them up in Microsoft Outlook. You can right click on them and choose Open With and then Notepad. And here is all the different whole data. And up at the top in the header information, there is a callout format. And by changing the callout format, you can get your whole notes to appear exactly the way that you want them to. And one other thing to mention about this is that it's strongly recommended that you don't edit these files directly in the load point of Creo Parametric. You really should copy these files to another location and then edit them there and then use a config.pro option to point Creo to your new folder of whole, whole files to use as opposed to the ones that come with the software. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.